Right, hello YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. We're back with the Sky Manta that we've been working on, and you might notice it's changed a little bit. Uh, that's right, we updated the engine. Someone recommended using the, the hull engines for the reinforced armor, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, makes perfect sense. Surrounded them with some heavy armor boxing, because they're also our generators, so I want these to be at least reasonably resilient to incoming fire. You've added rubber on top of them to make sure collisions are less damaging, and we've also added proper rubber... Uh, docks, basically, these sort of uh, frameworks that connect. Well, they actually connect, but they, they surround them. The aircraft does drift around a little bit, but I figure as long as we've got a reasonable amount of rubber surrounding it, it shouldn't cause too many issues when it detaches. I think that's because of the speed, but I don't know whether we can or even want to slow it down particularly. I know you can't really dock at too high a speed, but probably by the time we've attached everything, it'll be okay. I've been told the tilting on the aircraft is probably because of how heavy it is. Which I totally agree with. Uh, and one other thing I do need to do is, that I know already, is massively expand the rear fins on this thing. They're in functional enough that it can technically turn, but not within like probably a few, like 10,000 miles or something, if not larger. So that needs work. But I'm thinking what we'll maybe do today is build the central section. It is going to be heavy, this thing. I definitely know that much already. Oh, actually, they've no, got to leave that into we know how tall it's going to be. We probably also going to need rubber on the walls here, given it's going to be quite close to the uh, quite close to the right. So that's something we're also going to have to consider. Yes, yeah, so I figure we'll do the body section. Might even make it smaller, but this is how big we're thinking for now. Be good, and we'll slope it down from there. So, we have lots of space to put things in. I'm thinking we'll probably have quite a few missile batteries on the wings, given we could have empty space here. Maybe some quite powerful, like, um, collision, uh, kinetic missiles, maybe. Not too sure on that one, or reinforced missiles at least to make them a bit harder to, to knock out. We are going to have crams as one of our main weapon systems, but there's nothing wrong with having two. Uh, someone did mention making this thing a support craft. Drill guns? Uh, we potentially could, but we'd need a lot more power generation. And I think I'm happier having this thing be a bit simpler. Uh, as for the distance it fights at, that's also been brought up, said so probably should fight from long range because of its size. I. That's probably right, and I. But uh, since I'd like to fit it with crams at the moment, it's set up for bombing run. We'll maybe do some testing on that. We'll see how it, um, how its accuracy is, how its survivability is once it's done, and then see about maybe tweaking that. I don't think it's uh, an idea I'm going to write off yet, but it's also not one I'm going to immediately go all in on. Right. Want another one there, and then have a... Yeah, that should probably look alright. Yeah, if we go like that. We have a little bit of a disconnect between top and bottom, but... It's more of a, I have the general shape in my head thing than a know exactly how this is going to look already. Might even decide this sticks out too far, but again, we've got to, got to try it before we'll know for sure. Probably an easy way to do this. I guess we could prefab the slices, but it shouldn't take too long. How pointy? Well, I probably want it fairly pointy, because that will... or fairly sloped all the way because that will decrease the drag I suppose. And it's already going to be slowish anyway because it's going to have quite a lot of internals. Don't know whether we technically need all this space but it might depend on what we decide to put in it and we could always have some empty space and just have it for the looks. There definitely needs to be some containers in it so that would be some of it. We could also just use a lot of it as empty space. We could potentially have a Effectively, a large amount of spaced armor. So, sort of fit the components more towards the middle 
and have a sort of bunch of redundant empty spaces to, to help repel fire, maybe? I don't know, there's a few ideas we could do here. Or it could be by the time we start building the cram turrets, we decide they need loads of space and it's mostly full of those anyway. I'm thinking AP HE or AP frag for the cram cannons at the moment. AP specifically because I, again, I think I said this last time, but uh, what I remember, armor piercing cram shells, very hard to stop. It's actually very difficult to intercept them. It's not hard to hit them, but to actually burn all that metal away takes a lot of laser power. Or uh, dedicated actual missiles and things that are fairly punchy because, again, quite a lot of metal in a cram round that's like two meters across. But they are also something I'm very out of practice on, so I don't know quite what how our cram shells are going to go. But I don't remember them being particularly difficult to build. It'll probably be okay. Let's also fill that, that space in, at least on the top. Let's fill the bottom in before we fill the top at all. Oh, especially given that. Yeah. Given we never finished that, apparently. Uh, wait, no. Wrong piece. No wonder it doesn't... No wonder that's not fitting. It's the wrong one. want that. And, yeah. That. And... Oh, no, leave that. Like that. It's level. Let's get this level, and then we'll then we'll do the fill. Slightly messy at the moment, right? And then we've got to actually seal the back. I done that. Okay. There we go. And yeah, a little bit of a gap. Easily filled. Boom. Okay. Well, the rough shape's coming together, and it looks alright. We'll probably have to cut holes in the bottom for turrets. In fact, let's use the turret prefabs and mark space out for those now, and we can also get rid of the uh, central beam. That was just to hold it together while we were building. Don't need that anymore. We'll probably take that AI off as well. It's only placeholder. They're just on now because it's got some passive power. Let's shut the engines off and halt the noise. Noise is coming from. Is that the other ships? Anyway, right. Pre prefab. No, not prefab. Uh, sub objects. Sub objects. How many do these want to be? It's a question I don't really have a great answer for. Let's go for seven by seven and keep them relatively small. I probably want a few at least. Probably want what? At least two. Maybe three, maybe one at the rear, one at the front, one at the back. I'll keep them on the smaller side for now because I don't know how big these turrets are going to be on the inside. So if we do one there that's three back, one here that's three back from the engines. One there. It'll sit further down. Okay, that should be good. Because we now have to mark the exterior hole for where they're going to be. So we're going to actually beam it. Oop. 
keep the block count reasonably low where we can. Alright. Then we can cut out this interior section. But we probably want to leave that there actually for the moment. Uh, wait, no, we want that kind of projected up, don't we? We want that on the ceiling, if anything. So we know how wide it's got to be. <clears throat> so if we then... We can actually put in some ceiling. I'm leaving it somewhat open so we can get easy access to all the internals, but... Cover bits where we need to for the sake of things like this. Okay. This is one, one above, one behind. That means it practices. One there. One there. There we go, that's the interior dimensions of the turret marked. We cut this out entirely. I'll tell you what, we'll mark it as if we're, or we'll, we'll build the turret uh, ring or casemate or whatever you call it as if we're going to build to the full height. Are we? I do not know. Let's also... Paint that blue, not red, so we don't get the too confused now I think about it. Right. That's like two, three, and then what is it? And just straight on to the next one. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. in place. Prefab that to put the others in. Uh, but we do need to mark where they're going to go. Uh, do some bits like this as I go along, because otherwise it's a bit messy. Right. That does lead to slightly weird block layouts. I would say how are we flying at the moment, but I can't really ch test that, I suppose, until I um, put the AI back in, so I guess we won't worry about that just yet. Marker, put turret here. Tell you what. Let us break off immediately. And start chopping holes out the hole. I don't know whether I appreciate them making it out of single blocks or not. I'm leaning towards them not, but... I guess I guess it's kind of good because you can make neat adjustments, but... Uh, anyway, these templates are definitely useful. I am glad the devs added these, because... I wouldn't have a clue where these... turrets are supposed to go up to. Right. That's what I forgot to mark out. How wide... Let's see, what is it? Four beam from the center, so... Let's just put the add width markers as well. Again, so I know how hard to cut out. Now we know it fits pretty much exactly to the walls of the ship. Easy enough to cut out. Ship surgery. Right. Uh, prefab mode. Probably horrendously too tall, but hey ho. Right. That's actually right, because of course we're using the same template still. But the height. Oh, right click to add five. Yeah, is that actually right? That's right. Cool. 
Position in the centre. Yep. Got some extra hangers on, but that's fine. Right, we're in. Oh. Something popped off at the top. That's fine. Oh, it's the, uh, the bits in the middle, because there's no roof above them. That's fine. We'll know where to put those. So, put on the gaps again. Get those out. I also wonder, and I think about it, I wonder how they're going to perform, because we've had the new update, of course, and we've got the stability mechanic. So the way that works is basically that the faster you're going, the less accurate you get. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that's going to do to our, our cram cannons, if that is what we go for. Are we going to be more sort of soft limited to things like missiles and lasers? Well, lasers are going to be bad as well, I suppose. We're going to be more sort of soft limited to lasers, I wonder. Is this craft going to be flying slow enough that it doesn't matter so much? Is it going to be that you could still sort of use them anyway as long as your detection's good? I don't really know just yet. It's going to be interesting to see. If our, if our crams are like horribly inaccurate, we may have to switch plan, but... So we're shooting, that's the main guns. Probably enormously overbuilt, but if they end up being quite powerful, that's fine as well. I've got to be a little bit careful with the armor on the carrier because I don't want it to—I don't want it to be too heavy because it is heavy already. And of course, this has to fly. This isn't like the ships where you can sort of cheese it with the lift propellers. This has to fly by itself. Um, but we don't want it and it is going to be a lot cheaper than the craft it's carrying probably or at least it's not going to be much more expensive than any of the individual ships it's carrying but we don't want it to be completely fragile either so hmm. no box we'll definitely have to do something about the rear of that hull, that hull section as well but I do think the shape works okay Right, so let's have a crack at these crown turrets, shall we? Let's maybe do that quite early. Uh, is it right? No, that is not one. No, it was right. All in one. Why not? So... I don't know what the way you build cram cannons is these days. They work. You do connectors, right? Yeah. So I'm guessing we'll want a column. We'll maybe go for single barrel f at first, at least. Single barrel. Firing piece. So motor driven, I believe. Oh, increased accuracy? Really? Elevation barrel. Oh, yeah, we probably want elevation because we don't care about azimuth or on turrets. Recoil suppression barrel, middle. Oh, that's the part itself. Heavy. Counts as two for determining accuracy. Oh, really? Let's do the normal ones. What? Oh, okay. Big old muzzle break. I do like that. Actually, do we want that or do we want one of the other ones? No, I like that one most. Oh, what could we set? Minimum packing, maximum muzzle velocity. Max gauge, eyes lead. Okay, that's the normal, normalish stuff. Okay. 
So. Switch to the way I understand it. Gauge increases actually increase the size of the, the, the gun itself, if that makes sense. Uh, do we think we're going to use that? No, probably not, right. We will want a fusing box because we're going to be using APHE. A hol hollow point? There's a hollow point crown now? Okay. Low altitude, high altitude, time from launch. Pen depth. I'll show health reduce, I see. Two meters. Uh, yeah, that's probably... Maybe... Explode in the second, in the second, on the third layer, I should say. Right. What gauge are we at? 1300? Yeah, do they reduce the amount you need to get it to 2000, maybe? We are going to go for 2000. Uh, 2000, okay. Also mount temporarily some ammunition boxes so we can actually test this thing, and also the AI uh, redo the AI. Just chuck it. Yeah, we'll just chuck one of these in on the connector so we can just quickly cut it off later. Right. Uh, behavior. Control might be kajigged. Yeah, I think we are going to have to do some work on the control systems at least. But we'll need to build most of the craft before we can really fully do that. I suppose if we added quickly some, if we add some jets on the top. They should be able to control pitch technically, right? Yeah, they're actually on. Are eating power, but anyway. Oh, that is slow. That's with elevation barrels. Do we need motor barrels as well, or is it it's just because we're two two thousand? Is that what it is? Anyway, can't fire at the moment because no pellets. So. Looks like you don't need ammunition boxes anymore, it's just pellets, so I guess we just sort of stack it up, right? Oh, we're actually on the turret. Yes, okay. Compactor, how many packers it's attached to? So I guess what we would do... Oh, how's this laid out? Okay, so we want, probably, I'm going to guess, like that. Symmetry's not on. So I stack these, and then every layer we also have... A layer of payload compactors. And then we have our pellets around the edge, so... We do, like... Why is that not connected? Oh. Oh, is it actually like that? It's like that. Okay. If we do... Explosive pellets, and I guess we could just layer this. Capacity 1000, but let's see what it's doing at the moment. We may need to improve that 
barrel speed as well because it's far too slow at the moment. Packing. Okay. Kinetic damage. <laughs> Kinetic damage is building up already. It's already a 16 meter blast radius. It's not even done. Oh, 90 second reload. Yeah, that needs some work. Okay, that would be better with the more packers we add, but I'll do a test for it. In fact, let's, let's add some more quickly and then I'll speed up the reload for testing. We'll add some manually rather than worrying about prefab it just yet. Reload time. Reload time's cut in half already. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's our shell. Oh, I like the new model for the cram shells with the actual rifling on it. That's a lot nicer. Sploosh. So what is one of our shells packing when it's at full strength? Sure, 20 armor. Oh, wait, what's the shell health? Does it tell us? Oh, shell health increases as it packs more. Right, so if we... Let's prefab this quickly and we'll build a few of them. Stack it up a bit more. Uh, yeah, clear that. Let's be 5 by 5 yet. I mean, technically, we're not using the full width of the gun, so we could potentially upgrade this, but... Kind of want to get a bit of an idea of how these things work. But yeah, if we stack these all the way to the top and then we can replace the, uh, what the pellets are. Maybe Cram can fire quite fast now if it increases the, uh, packing rate as well. Hello time, 13 seconds. Sexual damage. 20,000 damage across a 20 meter radius, roughly. Oh, preparing packers. Oh, is there like a cooldown between each? Definitely set the uh, idle elevation to be a bit higher. That will speed up the um, elevation adjustment time, but let's also try... Still very slow. Is that just a penalty of the large gauge, I guess? Oh, inaccuracy for instability. Plus 0.01 degrees. Okay, so that's our stability thing, I guess. Okay, so let's now try changing up the values and see what sort of thing we're looking for roughly. We go for hard enough for part of it. I believe it's basically the ratio of pellet things on your um graph that sets the um the ratio loaded in. We'll need to fire the shell again to reset it. Get a proper readout. I believe it also changes the tracer colour. <coughs> basically averages out the colours. So let's see what we're looking at now. 24 hard and 108 HE. Oh, look at that shell health riding up. Shell health, 7,000. Just only 20 armor, but massively higher thing. That's our armor piercing. Tell us. Oh, 7, 8, oh, 7.27. Hmm. That's gone down a bit. Oh, 
Oh, I never added ammo, which has got a little bit from the cram cannon, I guess. Hmm. Okay, so that does... it is functional. Why am I looking at the Skyray? Let's try... Redoing how we pack it and see if we can make it a bit tighter. See if we can work out something that uses the space a bit more efficiently. So, because we have quite a bit of space in here. I guess we could extend it out by one. Hang on, where's the... That's a six-way connector. Okay, so if we go like that on all sides. Yeah, actually that one further. I think if we go packer. Oh, they want to be like that, don't they? Right. No, nope, other way around. Think like that, and then then oh, realize you haven't done that. Another one here. Oh wait, no, we want like that. Yeah, okay. That's slightly wrong because we want the yeah because we want those at the sides. But again, I'm learning. I haven't done this for a little bit. And then I think we go... If we go on each level... Frag, because I think we're going to do frag. Go frag and frag there. Uh, oh, and also here. It's four fragment, and then... Hardener and hardener there. That's... Two of each on each, right? I think. 60 hard and 60 frag. There we go, 50 50. Uh, where's our armor piercing? 4 AP, but that's in the fragments. Oh, 20 AP. Okay, that's better. Not quite enough to really truly pierce armor yet, but we'll see what happens. We'll actually load a fresh round, because I think that wasn't a completely fresh round either. Is there any way to compress in more pallets, or is that 1,000 the max? Or is 20 AP just the max? I think you can still paint armor even if you're not... I don't, actually, I don't know on that. How, I don't know how penetrating armor works when your armor penetration value is too low. Actually, it should tell you, right? I think it does tell you somewhere. Hang on. I'm going to do a bit of research to finish up the episode. I want to know how armor penetration works. Uh, sail guide, plane guide, jet guide, electric engine guide, detector, AI, engine, steam drills. Cram. That was a quick look. Whoop. No, don't open the cram things thing. I'm going to reload time. The shells are not fast. Is that a high angle? Oh. Oh, Crown Cat is set to high angle. Are their projectiles benefit from minor homing capability? I'm sorry. What? Mortars can home? Okay, that's new. I think. Collectors, gauge increases. Total to 20 are required to maximize it. Okay, barrels. Recoil, reduce your speed. Flash hider. Oh, shells re Oh! Shells fired- Oh, that's interesting, actually. I didn't know that. Shells fired for a can of at least one flash suppression barrel will have the shell's detection range reduced to 50% of its original detection range. Oh, we probably want that, actually. Yeah. They slow down the speed. We need one. Okay, yeah, we do want that, then. Motor-driven barrels. Elevation barrel. Vertical feed of fire. Okay, so 
We still need motor-driven barrels to increase the adjustment speed. It's just the elevation makes it... Allows it to elevate further. Okay, that makes way more sense now. Packers, manual and automatic. Honda. Armor piercing value of the shell... Okay, HE pellets. Okay. No compactors. And more pellets to be packed into a shell, increasing its potential damage up. Okay, so it's compactors that let you put more in. Shell packing set time, fusing box, laser targeter. Predictor. Okay, cool. So, first of all, flash suppression barrel. Actually, we'll, we'll redo the barrel entirely. So, first of all, motor driven. One, three, four. Then we need. Elevation barrels. It'll be a slightly odd looking barrel this one. Then we'll just do four regular ones, and then we want a suppressant. It's a slightly odd looking gun, but that's better. That's more like it. That's perfectly acceptable speed. I might adjust the idle elevation to 15 degrees. Yeah, there we go. So the next thing, yeah, is also to... Whoop. Oh, we're definitely building on it. Okay. Next thing is going to be to work out the best way to add payload compactors, because they're meant to be attached to these, right? Oh, crown connector. Ah, because these are horizontal. Hmm. These are both fragment, right? We go a bit more to the AP side of things. So 26 AP. 8 frag to double the amount of hardener. And then we can stack these flat. We'll try that. This might be horribly wrong, but... This, this might be tremendously overbuilding this gun or building a very expensive weapon, but we'll see what it does. Leave a bit of space for armor there, potentially. Right. Let's see what we're looking at. Train packers. 9,800. Yep. We could pack a lot more into the shell. Okay. We'll have to spawn in a uh, marauder in a minute to check this. Okay, so we're looking at... 120,000 kinetic damage, but only at 26 armor piercing? Okay, that should still punch through things even despite that. Then we've got 35,000 damage fragments, we've got 38 of them, so this should be a nightmare of a shell, if we can land it. <laughs> it's one of a relatively big target. And then, oh god, the skyrays are firing. Do we hit? We're going to hit. I think it's going to be a glancing hit, though. Yeah, I would say that. I would say that he did some damage. Okay. He just ripped a whole chunk out of it. Uh, hang on. Yeah, let's... Uh, yeah, disable movement and disable firing. Don't shoot while we're on the carrier, please. Let's aim for center mass. 
and fire when ready. Maybe check the reload time in a minute as well. Packing payload. Turning is not really happening. Is it actually going to hit? Oh, that looks good. I think. No, that's going to miss. Alright. Throw me vehicles. That's fine. Just delete that. We'll make another run in a sec. Right. What we should probably try and do is is use something like a Kingstead as well that's a lot bigger. Reload time, 25 seconds. It's not great, but if we synchronize the, the guns to minimize weight in between shells, that might work okay. Uh, we need a Kingstead. Am I remembering the name right? Is it still here? Uh, that was the big one. Well, the other thing we need to do is God mode. Um. Oh, why not stronghold? Oh, that might be it. Maybe it's been renamed. Okay, it's not the one I was thinking of, but we'll do right. Disable everything. And center mass. Let's get a hit off on this thing and see what it does. Oh, they actually managed to shoot it down. The rotters. I thought with shell health like that, it would be immune to her lasers, but maybe not. It's going to have flown over by the time it can take a second shot, isn't it? Okay, it's coming at the, It's coming from behind. Oh, from an angle from which their sea whiz does not seem to work. Any real damage? You're kidding me! Oh, it hit there. Oh, actually, you know what? I thought that was really bad, but now I look at it. Okay, yeah, it's not perfect. <gasps> oh, I thought it was a ship's cat. Wait, no, hang on. Oh, it is! It is! Or is it a dog? I'm not sure, but it does appear to be a cat serving, I think, drinks to another cat. But yeah, if you look at that, actually, it has punched through the top layer, blasted fragments throughout this, and made some pretty good holes in it, and also punched through the lower layer. Oh no, we've knocked his drink over. But yeah, this one's just full of cats. I think they are cats. I don't know, are they? Yeah, no, it is cats. I think. Huh. I'm not sure what's going on inside this ship. I like it, but I'm not 100% sure what is happening. But yeah, that actually kind of punched through three layers of armor. That's not bad. Let's spawn a... Let's wait for the shell to reload. Just to finish off the episode, we'll spawn... Is it a star, star, star slung? Or whatever it's called? Let's spawn one of those that craft we had trouble with last time and see if A, the shell can get through and B, what it does to it if it hits. Strauss and that sort of awful missile thing that we had trouble with last time. Let's say we're coming on a fairly average bombing run. Firing there. What do we get? Oh, well, apparently, no attempt at intercepting. I think this ship might be in trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that just... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Woo. Oh, so how much ship was that? Look at that. So it took out the whole bridge. Punch you two decks. The three decks and some armor at the bottom. Wow, okay. We have been missing out. No wonder we've been struggling to destroy stuff. Apparently you want cram cannons. They might have been reworked, given they've had the graphical rework as well. We're going to fire another shot. I know I was going to end the episode there, but I'm going to fire another shot. I want to see this. We do need to adjust this thing's uh, flying, though, because it basically can't turn at the moment. Oh, I like the red and blue decoys. That's... Much as I hate the decoys for them being decoys, it is a nice touch. We've got a little helicopter on the back. Does that actually work? Right, let's see what we're looking at from this impact. Oh, boy. Okay. So one ricocheted, punched through here. 
the direct hit has just taken a huge chunk out of the ship. He's what, 25 second reload to take a massive hole? I mean, look at all those blocks that we just knocked out. Not as many as he actually would think, but it's a big chunk of armor we've killed there. Cool, okay. We're going to leave that there. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. Uh, I make games as well as uh, playing them, so if you want to help out, check the thing. And yeah, next time we'll work on those cannons a little bit more. We'll get them armored up. We've got some detection systems fitted into them, but I think in terms of actual payload and everything, they're looking pretty good. Don't know how expensive they are. Probably very. Yeah, shit, yeah, probably a, that's probably like a 75,000 resource gun, I think. But, frankly, for that kind of power, we could afford that. Alright, I'll see you guys all next time. Goodbye.